All righty. Make some adjustments. I don't have this on my um, up on my screen beforehand, so I'm sorry. I have to make these adjustments afterwards. There we go. Um, I still am working on figuring out the best option for having a second camera. So my apology is that you have to talk to these instead of um, my smile. So um, I apologize on that, but I will get that figured out. Um, so hopefully everybody's having an awesome week. I hope the sound is okay. Um, if either Pam or Joy could tell me how sound is doing, that would be awesome. As, um, for those of you who joined us last time, we um, I'm doing a different um, broadcasting system. And so as a word, sound is good. Okay. Um, and so I'm still figuring a few things out uh, with that. So <clears throat> tonight we are going to be working on um, a few more pages of the paperback book um, little mini journals that, uh, we started on during, um, uh, the last class. Um, they were, they have been, uh, lots of fun. I just took a paperback book. I still, I'm pl still planning to do a video where I show, um, just how I assembled these little, um, they can either be a journal in and of themselves or they can be signatures. Um, and I'm still going to do a separate video showing how I de did this. And this was from a paperback book that the, one of the kids had from school and the back of it had the back section of it had gotten all wet. It, it normally I would have probably just tossed it. Um, but I just took off the section that was damaged and then the rest of the pages um, I just tore out a section um, and then with some hockey stick tape or other woven type tape you could glue on fabric or something like that um, over the spine. And then on the inside, it has um, washi tape glued down over each of the um, uh, pages along that uh, spine edge. And you can use any sort of um, tape that you want. And then we've been taking it and turning it into a little journal signature that will then, um, I'm going to take all three of these and turn it into a book. And a two to three. We'll have to see how this first one turns out width wise. I'm not a one who's really big on really thick books. Oh, the other thing too, um, for some of you, it didn't seem to happen to everybody, but for some people, um, the, uh, autofocus on my camera is an issue and I'm still trying to figure out how I can do that from my Chromebook because I'm I'm now broadcasting up of a Chromebook which is different than a <coughs> excuse me a laptop so I'm still trying to figure out um, some of that so I apologize in advance if the autofocus um, bothers some people some people said it wasn't even doing it for them so I'm a bit <laughs> um, confused as to why it shows up for some people and not for others. But anyway, we were are going to use my XYZ binding, which I do have a video for, um, to make these into a book. We did this um, first page. I think it was just this first page. We might, and I think we did the second page. We may not have done the second page. Um, but then that night, I just kept working and I worked on um, a few more. Um, there's a tag with a little hinge tag on it that fits into a little tuck pocket. Um, and there's this one that has page on it or has a tag that slips into the pocket. And then this ties and flips up and flips down. So the pages are very similar to pages we've done for the past 10 years. Um, just collaged on there. You could do them just plain matting. What we started with on eight of these is I matted each of the pages with more of a background kind of looking papers. And these were all old seven gypsies, six by six pad 
papers, which <coughs> I've been digging out my studio and finding all sorts of treasures um, that I forgot I had. And I actually found a pack of another six or seven, um, seven gypsies, six um, by six pads. So um, we'll be able to do that on these other ones, whether I'm going to do two more or just one more. But I figured tonight um, we'll go ahead and work on another page or two in here. And um, I'm just reading here, making sure I'm not missing any um, quick questions. So, um, But I also want to show here on uh, this one I've done with a little bit larger paperback book. Still, it's, you know, it's a little bit taller, a little bit wider, um, about an inch, a little over an inch wider. So this is a, a larger size paperback book. And then I did some different color, a um, little bit more colorful um, washi tape in the pages in between. Um, on this one, I'm thinking of on the pages themselves is I've got some uh, mixed media paper here that I may mat this with a mixed media paper in the white, do a little bit of watercolor wash stuff on there, and then collage on the washes just to get it a different look. Um, <clears throat> whether you want to do a page in here, maybe a page in here, we can do that. Um, it's what everybody decides they want to work on tonight. We're going to work on these little books here for the next um, uh, couple weeks until we get to National Scrapbook Day um, the first Saturday in May. And then we will start a project that combines both a 3D project along with um, some little books as well. Kind of like I've done for a squillion years now. So <coughs> I've also done one where I took an old magazine and I love this format. A tall skinny book is just, I've been wanting to do one of these for quite some time and this worked out absolutely perfectly. Now I took an old magazine and by old, I mean, this was ancient cause I looked and it's a 1996 magazine. Yeah, it's from 1996. So uh, yeah, this one's been around for a while. And the same way I just took off um, a number of pages and then and I'll just do this with one page in here. I'll just leave it in here rather than tearing a whole other section off. And all I did is then I took the pages and I folded them in half. Um, actually, I didn't fold them in dead half. I folded them to where they were. This one's coming out already, so I'm just going to go ahead and take it out. Um, but what I did with the pages is then I did them up just under a quarter of an inch from that spine. Because I, with the tape on there, I didn't want to add too much, too much more um, depth for the spine. So I'm just, as you can see there, about a quarter of an inch away. Um, and then when I put the tape on, it didn't add uh, more um, depth is not the right word. Um, bulk and thickness in there. So then I, this is a, um, a, a black masking tape, which is a washi tape essentially is, it's not much different. So I used a black masking tape, um, just because I want to do this one a little bit more artsy fartsy. Um, but when I took the pages after I folded them over, like I did on this one, what I did is I took my glue stick because I tried it with just regular glue and it made it really wrinkle. The um, the glue stick um, was the best option in terms of it stuck down cleanly and it stayed stuck down and it also didn't make the, the shiny paper wrinkle because um, this is, and I went for a, one of my magazines that was kind of that a little bit higher quality, like a Stampington type quality magazine. So I, um, but it does have a shiny finish on it. Um, but see, then it didn't, it didn't wrinkle and rumple. This first page on here, I glued this one and it's why it's all crinkly and wrinkly. And the rest of them are all um, smooth. Um, but just using, you know, my glue stick for 
to attach those down and um, it stays stuck nicely. But then I just went through after each page, making sure I was covering over that um, seam where I put the, there's a page where you can see it a little more easy, um, where I put that tape down over the top. I could use um, marker, which is one of the things I thought about doing is some white marker, or I can put some narrower tapes down over the top of it um, when I'm ready to um, start putting um, papers in it as well. Um, and that just gives the, the pages a little bit more body because they are um, double thickness, especially if I'm going to be doing some collage stuff on the top. So hopefully I'll get, <coughs> excuse me, started on um, some pages um, in this today that I can show you on next Friday. Today, this week has been just an, an absolutely insane week. I had um, several appointments over the week. Got my eyes done, got my first shot on Monday. And I swear when I leave my the house to go to any of these appointments, it I lose good chunk of the day. So um, it's just been a little crazy with everything going on. And so I didn't get anywhere near as much work done. With this one, I'm probably going to combine some of the um, echo printed papers that I did um, along with this new paper collection that I'm still um, working to get. I, I have the papers all done. I just have to do all the the journal cards um, just because this has that more um, art um, journal kind of look, which is what I was trying to go for um, with this um, this paper. So I, don't, I think I'm going to use this on this tall, skinny one. So um Hopefully over the weekend, I'll get this paper up for people, this digital paper. Um, but I just have to do some journal cards and tags um, with it. So even if I get the paper up with some journal tags, journal cards and tags, if I do so, I can do some more cards and tags after. Then I have some more that have don't have the pattern, um, the, the um, kind of the botanical elements on there. It's just the kind of background. Um, with some dots and stuff. So, um, and this will work in because a lot of these papers I printed out and then ran with my echo dye stuff and all of the color washes out when I echo dyed it, but all the black stayed. So um, for instance, these dots, when I printed this one with the echo dye, all it got was the dots in and the color all washed out, but it's still going to help um, visually tie things together. So, um, anyway, so there's those papers and these will, um, I'm going to do my best to get these, um, up this weekend. Um, I don't have a name for it yet, this paper collection yet, but it's, um, my latest digital paper. So, Okay, Malin says, did you use glue to fasten the washi tape? I did. When I put my washi tape as well as this um, masking tape, I did use glue sticks. So um, my favorite is this, the Uhu, um, but I've also had super great success with the Scotch one. So I got a big fat one of the Scotch and the smaller ones of the Hoot. Uhu. I also have this Uhu one that it comes in a blue that dries clear. I have it too, but these are these are my favorite uh, for the. I, I don't use the blue one because it just I'm, I don't always trust that it's actually going to turn clear, but it always does. But I don't always trust it. But these are the two glue sticks I I prefer. Um, if you and you can just use any, um, for instance, this one says it's a permanent. So you just want to make sure you're not using one of the um, repositionable <laughs> ones. So <clears throat> so hopefully that answered. I apologize too, is um, I'm in full bloom of allergy season. So if I'm a little stuffy sounding, that is why. Uh, 
Oh, and Pam says, can I do a mu musical note paper and maybe a text type paper? I want to do a whole collection that's all sorts of different kinds of papers. Um, just kind of a, so you can use those as background. Now, one thing too is if, and this is something that Pam ran into, is if you're using a digital paper that you are printing in a um, inkjet printer, when it has, if you if you're using any kind of wet media on it, you have run into a distinct um, uh, issue with the the ink will run with if with wet media, um, it will leach up through like a white. Let's say if you're using some sort of um, a paste or something, a lot of the times the inkjet ink will leach up through that. So what I do is I spray it with a workable fixative in um, advance. Just a second, I'm turning around to grab it. So I use a, a workable fixative. Um, because then you can work on top of it. You do want to spray this outside because it's really nasty smelling and I'm sure it's probably pretty toxic because, but any kind of, I mean, this is an inexpensive one that you can get pretty much anywhere. They have actual workable fixatives um, as well. You're probably a little bit more pricey, but, um, and then you can still do stuff on top of it. It doesn't lose its matte finish. Um, a, a less expensive way to do you, way to seal this is with an inexpensive hairspray like Aquanet. Um, and it's essentially the same sort of thing. Um, and it's cheaper and you can use some of that. Um, you want it to dry completely before you start working on it. If you're not wanting to make it workable still, but you want to keep it to where any kind of wet, um, is on it. Um, it won't make the ink run, then you can use the distress glaze, Tim Holtz, that you can just, you just kind of rub it into the paper. Um, it does, it does look, to a certain extent act almost like a resist. So it's not always readily workable. If you're using like an acrylic paint and you have this really worked in, it still kind of works, but some like a watercolor will beat up on top of it. But um, this glaze stuff is great for sealing um, your digital paper. So if you're going to be using wet media, not necessarily wanting to transform the paper itself, um, this stuff is, it works well. But um, I just use the, some sort of a spray fixative on there to keep it from the ink from running and just, um, and Pam says the hairspray work. Yeah. It's, you know, you can go to the grocery store and get Aquanet. I mean, we're talking the cheap hairspray too. Not, not the pumps. You want the spray, not the pump, the kind of stuff that it, you know, in the fifties and sixties with the bubble hairdos and stuff that, you know, women and girls would just, you know, lacquer their hair to death. That's the stuff that you want, the cheap stuff. <laughs> you don't need to get the fancy um, expensive pump bottle, the, sp the spray kind of, um, bottle can works the best um but it does keep um then your um digital papers from the ink from just smearing so but yes i do want to do um some just basic neutral vintage paper backgrounds um some vintage kind of looking tags and that sort of thing for doing some of this um, collage journal, um, you know, like this piece right here with it being like a grid paper. I just want to do some of those that, that you're, you know, not reliant on, hey, wh what do I have around? You know, I have lots of pattern papers, but I don't have that neutral background kind of stuff. So I want to do some of those so that um, you can just print out as you need. So that will be kind of one of those... Um, neutral sets. I have, I think I have one or do I have two? Um, it's kind of like neutral backgrounds kind of set. So, but I want to do something like that. So anyway, um, 
so this one, as I said, is going to be much more of an art journal kind of thing. And I'm super excited about um, working on that. <coughs> um, and so we can work on this. And then if we want to do one page out of this one where I'm going to do it a little bit more art journaly too, um, we can. One other thing real quick, just set this off to the side, is I did take, I'm grabbing it. My book that I'm I'm still working on the hundred days of of uh, the hundred day project and I'm gonna go well past the hundred day deadline because I've missed like three weeks in here where life has just been coming at me a little too fast to spend the time that I need to on this and I was having issue with it so um, it was getting too big and cumbersome to work in as one big fat two sided book and so I decided. My conjoined book was going to have separation surgery. So um, I separated it into two books. So, um, and this is going to be a tutorial of, uh, for the structure of the book itself that I'll do a tutorial because this has these hinged um, pocket things on the front. One of them's vertical, one of them's horizontal. Um, so this is the vertical book and this is... This is actually a horizontal book, but I have the pictures to where this is vertical. So, oh, oh no, this is right. Okay. No, I do have it right. Okay. So one of them's got, they're both formatted on a vertical basis. This one's got the binding to get into the book on the side. This one's got the binding at the top. So it'll be a, more of a flip style book. Now this one ended up with the, the piece that divided the two it got to keep it as its back. And this one, I'm going to be adding a new back onto it because, you know, there's only, there was only one back to go. So it had to go to one. So I'll put a new back on this one. And this is actually going to be two books. The books will, for the structure of the books and the layout of the books will be a tutorial eventually. <coughs> the detailing of what I've done on this already. Um, I was, I have been documenting as I've gone along what I've been doing with the different um, little journal type books that go on the inside that I haven't done anything in them yet. Um, but I will continue this. I will eventually get all hundred days worth done on it. It's kind of changed from what my original intent was on it. The kind It's kind of morphed into a different direction, which is very common for projects um, to do. This one has two little ones on it. Um, inside then it has each of the sections has a little journaling section in it but this will be part of my um photo journal series um so we'll um i'm going to keep working on it but when it does come out as a tutorial rather than being a back-to-back -back book the way it started out it has um, been separated into two books and both books will be in the tutorial when I do it. Uh, what it'll probably be is a video tutorial assembly, you know, how you assemble the basics of the book itself uh, and then how you embellish it. Obviously I'll have this one as an example, but then you can, um, you can choose how you want to embellish it. But um, it just was getting, when it was like this on the back and this on the front, it was just getting so big and cumbersome and flipping around and stuff. I just decided it's not even hardly filled yet. It's just going to be too, too much and too big. So cutting it down, I think, and, and conjoining the twins was a good plan. So it's going to turn into two books. So. But I will be back on Instagram on showing... Um, that as I get back to it, I'm hoping to do that a bit next week. So, all righty. So, um, let's go ahead and work on at least um, one page set on this one to where we have this green and brown. And we have a total of. I think this has a total of 14 pages in it. So flip it to this one and then um, depending on what time it is, maybe we'll work on one in this other book that's more um, with some painting stuff in it. So 
One of the things I thought about doing is we can also add, well, the other one that I did, I also had an envelope that I had it wrapped from one side to the other um, with an envelope, but we can also do this as a pocket on here. So I'll have to decide what I want to do, but we can do something with the envelopes. I also have these little guys. So I don't know, we'll think about it once we get to that point. So, hmm. See, and I found a whole nother stack of papers that I thought would work with this. This is an old um, Seven Gypsies. This is called Clippings. It's got some good neutrally kind of things in it, so I like that one. Another, this is Basics. Um, another um, Basic Gray, which I miss. And then the, I found all of these guys. Um, these are some of the same papers that we're, we're using already. So, um, so I got more Seven Gypsies papers. To use. Let's see, there's my whole stack of goodies. It's just, it's so much fun just having gone through my studio. And now I'm in my storage, my, uh, another room that I have all my old stuff stored for kits and old kits and stuff and the projects, unfinished projects, all that. So, so these are, uh, some of these are Bow Bunny. And some of these are Tim Holtz, just little cards that you can get that come in different multiple sizes in each package. I have some Seven Gypsies tags. Here's some old Kane Company stickers. Kane Company is another one that I just desperately miss. Um, <coughs> different kinds of styles of little stamp stickers. So those are cute. Um, this is the parts that we cut off. And then all the different papers and then Oh, I showed you with that one um, on the other version, which I didn't get out, um, where I took um, an envelope, and this is a more rectangular envelope, and we wrapped it so that it was on both sides of the page, and we might do something with that. And then I found these other cute little baby envelopes. These are ones I, t I showed you last time, I think, that I get at Paper Source. They're these just cute little colorful um, little coin envelopes that Paper Source, which is a chain stationery store. So um, some cute little tickets. I also found some, some ticket stamps that I have. So that's the other thing. That, that's one of my next things is once I finish having my studio all dug out, um, I'm going to go through all of my stamps it's to remind myself just um, what I do have. These are all some little holdover tabs. Like I said, everything, you know, you, uh, Seven Gypsies isn't around anymore, but Tim Holtz has something very similar to these that you could use as well. So, um, so many things are, you just have to look in different places and you'll still find um, the same um, sort of thing. What was I turning to? I was turning. Oh, in terms of stamps, I know like what I like to do is, is I like to keep a basket here by my, my uh, work table that has some stamps as I've been working and come across and it's got some stamp stuff that I got. Oh, these might work with some projects that I have coming up. So this is like, barely a drop in the bucket of all the stamps I have. It's embarrassing. Um, but by keeping them at, at easy reach when I'm coming across them going, oh, that would really work for the projects that I've got going on right now. So I just keep those here in, um, in a basket. Even something like these guys that are some, these Santoro ones that it's like, this doesn't look at all like it would go with any, anything kind of that I'm working on right now, but in reality, don't look at the, the set of stamps in their entirety. If I can get them out, <laughs> that is, come on out. Okay, maybe it doesn't come out that way. 
shows how often I've gotten these out. I think it comes out up here at the top. And this pulls out is what I recall. Maybe, maybe not. Come on, stamps. There it comes. Um, but it has this frame. And these are rubber stamps, so these aren't. But see, it has this frame that doesn't look anything at all cutesy. Um, and that would work awesome for many projects. So don't always look at just what some of the other things. Like here, this is a good, it just has little lines on it. So it's good for just making a little journaling spot. So when you're looking at a collection of stamps, don't always look at the main piece in there. There's just a little, just a little tag thing. So, um, and so while the little gorgeous girl doesn't really work with what I'm doing, you know, this frame, though this one's a little bit large, um, but look at everything in the, the grouping. I'm not going to take the time to put that all back in there. Um, also different kinds of stamps. These are some really old um, Claudine Helmuth stamps that have um, an acrylic stamp and then it has these foam stamps and the foam stamps give you the background. You can stamp those with the background and then put these over the top to give the detail. But even these, like this one is way cool. Um, and so is this one. You may not want the floral stuff, but this is kind of some cool ones to do some fun stuff with. So it doesn't have to always be just rubber or or um, acrylic stamps, you know, foam stamps. You can even make your own foam stamps using um, fun foam. So, um, but I know we all have these kind of collection type stamps. So, you know, there's some butterflies and stuff, which I use frequently, but there's also some other little element pieces that could be fun. Um, you know, this is journal, journal de roses. I do not do French. So, um, and here's another one of these gorgeous girl ones, but it has some cute things for doing, um, some journaling or something that aren't necessarily cute kind of things. Um, and then you have like Seth Apters. These are some of his um, line, they're long skinny stamps and they have some really cool things on it. Even some of these just cute little inexpensive acrylic ones. Um, and then I have some that are just loose and free. <laughs> so, um, but having a basket that you keep by your work area, when you have a large collection of stamps, having a basket that you keep nearby you'll probably be more inclined to use those. And <clears throat> if you use one, maybe take it out of the basket and put something, a new one in. Um, that way, if they're easy to grab and close by, then you're more inclined um, to probably use them. So just uh, one of those little quick tips. So. Well, I wasn't going to do a cover um, tonight. Um, I was just going to work on some pages. But I thought I kind of, I can walk through it again. I thought I would kind of walk through it in the last class. And I know I'm going to do a cover. Um, but none of the, like this one is not going to have a cover on it because it's going to be attached using my... Um, XYZ to a uh, binding bar because I'm going to have multiple signatures in there. So this one's not going to have a cover. And I did kind of talk through the little flap on the cover. And let me grab that one real quick of the one that I did showed you last week. Because this is the one that I showed last week that I've got a cover on it. And I talked about how you can have a flap that goes from this piece. And then it goes on to here to attach the cover. So you can see that here on the spine. Now, and I left, 
it about a quarter of an inch. So if I took, let's pretend this envelope is two flaps. This is the, this is the side that, and remember I'm pretending, so it's not an envelope to attach this, but it's a hinge, two piece hinge. So if this is the part that I'm gonna attach to my page and this part will attach my cover. When I'm attaching it to my page, I want it to attach about a quarter of an inch back from this spine area because that allows it to, as you can see, it stretches it out a little bit. That way, because if it was super tight on there, this, if I did the, had it actually attached to that spine, it would make my cover be at like a 40 degree open. <laughs> so, or at 70 degree, 80 degree open, I mean. So you don't want to be tied up against there. You want that breathing room. Um, for any of you who remember way back or you've looked at my um, paper bag album from way back, way back, way back, like 2009, 2010, I don't remember exactly when I did that one, where attaching the paper bags, I also backed it up from the very you know, fold of the paper bags and allowed that breathing room and that just allows that to accordion kind of expand out so that when I hold this close, it spreads open, but it gives it that room to be able to do that. Otherwise it's gonna tear. Does that make sense to everybody? So I attached my cover before I actually did this front page because the it, it was actually this piece, this this tan background actually extended out, but I could have also had it to where it hinged and was underneath this piece and then underneath this paper on you know my, my front and back. Um, so this piece, again, was just long and it extended about an inch to an inch and a half onto the cover and then this paper went over it. This um, piece of washi tape on both the front and the back is this there for show? This one's not sticking down all the way because it's not covering over a joint at all. It's just because every other page had it as well. So it's just there. I've just applied it on there um, for visual. It's not serving any purpose. Um, now, if I were doing this to where I wasn't extending this, I would make this about an inch to an inch and a half from this um, joint line that extends on this side and an inch to inch, inch and a half that extends on this side. And then I would put this um, background over the top of it and this paper over the top of it so that it covers over the joint. Does that make sense to everybody? Oh, you're using the XYZ. Well, the XYZ and, and that I will probably go ahead and do next week because I want to get this one a little bit further along and I want to get one of the the second ones further along so I can determine whether I want to do two or three. Um, and then we'll make our little triangle binding bars um, that this will attach. And my XYZ binding can attach to um, this part, which is the... Um, where the, the tape is, you can, we can also do it to where at about the halfway, the middle point, we could have um, a, a cord going through there and it loops through the binding bar. And I'll show you that as well so that this can tie on versus um, being glued on. So um, you can do either, either one, but I, I was figured maybe we can do the binding, um, either next class or the class after that, depending on when we've got these that far along. Um, I, it, it, because the honeycomb binding, that was the very first, that was, that one even predated um, stack the deck. Um, the honeycomb binding requires a sleeve um, type of page for that to work. So um, the honeycomb would not, unless you were gluing the, the, the flange, so to speak, of the honeycomb, um, unless you were gluing it to either the front or the back of your signature, 
or you were tying it um, to the prefold of the signature. Um, but that that honeycomb accordion requires the the sleeve type of page in general. All right, does anybody other have some quick questions? Uh, I just hate my eyes are burning today from my allergies thing. And it's, it just completely and totally wigs me out. Cause it, how my eyes feel is like when you have a fever, how your eyes kind of get feeling kind of burning thing, but I don't have a fever even a little bit, but it's weird. Cause it makes my eyes burning. And then whenever you, you know, all of a sudden you think fever, you're just, you know, panic but um it's just my allergy fact the eye doctor today is like yep you, your allergies are really kicking your eyes up so he actually gave me a, a coupon for some fancy dangled eye drops that he wants me to get so <coughs> okay all right so let's just keep on working on this the other thing i did on here is on each of the pages let me glue this down because it's making me nuts um Um, is I went through and made my own little marks with my black, just a sharp marker. So on this page, I added some little dots in kind of a grid pattern. And then on this one, I didn't do anything. Um, on this one, I added just, this is just in these spot. Oh, here I did. I did. I did some lines up here at the top in these kind of blank areas. See, I've got some blank areas because we're using six by six paper. So I just did make, you know, this is just freehand, just making some marks um, to make this to where it's, you know, it's yours. It's your hand actually making those little marks. So, you know, do that. So these are just some little lines and X's. And then here I just did some little zigzags. You could also, if you were inclined, you could do some stitching. Um, whether my machine or hand, if that's what you're into wanting to do. Now this one, I didn't do any on this one because I didn't have a lot of the open space, but when I get to this one and I have those open spaces, you know, you can add some little marks in there. You can even little squiggles, um, you know, whatever kind of thing you want in there. So what color is the page on the back side of this? I'm trying to decide if I want to put this green envelope. Can't really do it on this one, but I could, what if I fold it this way? So I could do it on this one, have it open up where it's got the pockets. I could do it, there's that, it opens up. This opens up to in here. And then I could have it to where then it hinges like that till we access it. That would be kind of fun. That's if I want it on this side. But if I do it or do it on this one, I can have it because it kind of goes with the brown. Can't say that I'm excited about with the red lines. Might go better with this one. This has got some green in it and it goes good with that tan. So maybe we'll save this green pocket to put on a different page rather than use it on this one. Let's see what else, what other kind of goodies do I have that we could use? What other um, envelopes? I'm trying to See if I got some other envelopes that would work. So many goodies. So little time. I could do one of those. See, and then I found I found more colors of those little envelopes. I found these little envelopes 
that are like little tag envelopes. Um, found these little envelopes. And I've got these little mini bags. Just all sorts of goodies. Oh, here's a little paper bag, too. See, there's just... Also, so that'd be fun to have a little paper bag in there. Because it would be fun with this. You could actually even have it flip up. The stuff's in it. And then you can have something underneath this. So it could even be a little... You glue this in a U-shape and it makes it a little pocket. So that would be kind of fun. I like that. <coughs> this is a larger coin envelope. So that could attach on there. Having maybe that little bit of green showing. We can have it to where it closes or open. The tag goes in it. Also have these cute little, the, the same, I have a whole <laughs> slew of these, these same little guys. Um, so they could kind of go maybe side by side here, have little tags in them. These two, the blue and the green. So it's be kind of fun to where then they close. Then I have these little tagged envelopes that I found. Um, you could, I don't know if I would, yeah, thin. I wouldn't use cardstock weight, but for instead of here at the washi tape. Um, the beauty of the washi tape is it's kind of it's got a little bit more flexibility to it, but you can try it. It might be a little stiff. Um, but if you don't have washing tape, like I, I used here, I use masking tape. Um, even if it's just your basic masking tape, you know, the, your basic color, this kind of color masking tape, um, that works too. I'm 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 just hesitant on the paper. I'd I'd rather see you use um just some um lightweight fabric on there. I'm just concerned about using um unless it's real if it's thin paper, then it could potentially tear. Um I mean washi tape is not exactly strong. Um, but I would certainly try it. I just wouldn't use very heavy paper so so I've got these cute little guys that have these the little tag on the opposite end of where it opens so that's kind of cute and a couple of these might be fun because then I could have little tags or little strings hanging off of those and they still open up so that'd be kind of fun too those <coughs> oh excuse me it's gonna be bad this year I can just tell they get the death look when you sneeze in a store it's like so these are cute little you can even make little bags on there that one, if it can't kind of corner down in there, it can be a tuck spot where something else can go back behind it and then have a tag down inside. So then you can have your tag go inside and then have maybe one of the larger ones tucks in the edge or have it on this side so it doesn't matter if it sticks out. 
That might be kind of cute. And I could, you could actually do that with the envelopes too, to where it has an L shape and those just tuck in and that fits there. You can have multiple ones going back behind that little envelope. So that's a, another possibility. So I have these guys in the white butcher paper and the craft. And then I have these little pair of on little. These are all from a paper store that used to be here locally. But, you know, these are super cute. This would also be a cute thing to have in there. You can have little tags in there. And it can also be a pocket. So, hmm, now we have to decide. <laughs> the other option is if I use one of these a little bit larger ones rather than folding it around like I did that other one I could also take this I don't know if I like it with either of these colors it would have to be probably in a different part of the book but I can glue this down <laughs> then I'm going to cut it in half. Actually, I'm going to just tear it. Let's mark where half is. She's not measuring, she's not cutting, she's tearing, she's winging it. So this could be a pocket that either goes on this way or it could go on this way where something pops in. I'm thinking it could go down here. She might turn it around so that it has something in the pocket in here, like so. And then you can have another large one that tucks back behind. Multiple ones could tuck back behind. So it could even be up where the green is showing. So it's also something to where we could hinge that on. So kind of like we had with the paper bag to where it hinged on. We could do the same sort of thing as have a hinge to where so we can have stuff underneath. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. I don't like the purple with this, so I'm going to save this one, I think, because the pur purple's bugging me with it. So I think if, I'm going to save that one and some of these guys. Anyway. I think I'm going to do this paper bag and then we can put, you know, multiple tags down inside there, but I can hinge it. Um, this way and then that can be a pocket so I think that's what I want to do with this one is attach that on in that L shape and uh, do that so I'm going to glue this down in a U so I'll use my liquid glue for this I'm going to center it on the green, have it about maybe an eighth to a quarter up from the bottom. Let's hold that in place, let it attach a bit. I feel like I need the Jeopardy music going on as we wait. So then 
that. I don't want to stick too much in there. But see, then that gives me a little pocket down there. One of the things I think I'll do is with this bag so it doesn't isn't able to pop open. And this little triangle part of the bag, if you open up that little triangle pack part, I'm going to put some glue on it. The way my bag stays folded, it doesn't try to pop open. I probably should have done this beforehand. Do all the same on the other side. Pop open then just that triangle right there. And close that up. That way my bag doesn't try to pop open. So we'll just clamp it till it catches. Yeah, see, and now it doesn't it doesn't try to pop on that side, especially once it's dry. You just hold it for a few more seconds while it dries for a minute. Anybody have any other questions while we're working along? While we're watching glue dry? Tigger loves having my couch right in front of my closer to the front of my desk. It used to be kind of across the room. And he loves sleeping on this couch and he just stretched out his little toes and stretched them all out. And he's like, don't talk about me. <laughs> he's just a total bum. All right, so now that is ready to hinge and I can put stuff inside the bag and we can have something here. And it's also a little pocket. So now we can start putting some pattern paper on here. So on some of that skinnier parts, I can use some of these guys. Let's do a little bit of green there by tearing it, make it a little bit more rusticated. Salem is um, a very skittery cat. He sometimes is in here along with... Um, with Tigger, but he tends to stay during the day. He likes to tuck away. He's, he finds a hidey hole to sleep in. He's usually out more in the mornings or in the evenings, but during the day he goes and tucks himself away. And then in the evening he wakes up and harasses um, Sarah's cat patches to death. He thinks it's just the greatest, greatest thing in the world just to annoy her to no end. <coughs> Maybe do a little, little piece of this here. And then this goes over it. So I kind of just, just give it some, flatten that out so you can see better without it flapping around yeah this is fun kind of working on something a little bit smaller somewhere along in the last couple years we started doing these much larger albums you know that had like eight by ten pages in them so it's fun to go back i agree to go back to these smaller sizes um <coughs> they're quicker you know many books or many albums 
started out when I was first doing them, the vast majority of them were in the like three to five inch size. And then they started growing and, uh, and it was kind of, everybody wanted the bigger size and it was like, ah, they take so much longer. Whereas these, these little guys, it's kind of fun. What I'm liking is I'm doing this all with a six by six, even though this is taller than six by six. Um, I'm doing this all with um, six by six pads. So then on the front, I can do this and then have a narrower section. So then I can have a kind of a tuck pocket there. That might be kind of cute. Let's cut that at about. Oh, I'm going to actually cut this one because I want it straight. See, and I'm being so miserly. I'm using these bits and pieces. Cut a little bit more off of these. It's a little tall, so I'm gonna cut about eight to an inch off of these. That better that gives me an eighth of an inch all around above the fold. And I think if I do it this way and then my pocket opens in here, I have a little bit more. So if I have a pocket and stuff tucks in, if it hangs out a little bit on this side, it's not a big problem. Whereas flipped over it would be so. I'm going to put that that way. doing these little rolled corners lately kind of roll it up give it a little old thing there I think I want something along this 
edge. So let me look in my bag of goodies. Maybe some trim. Giggle on the edge. Remember my basket of goodies? So this has some Digiyamalicious brown velvet ribbon in here. I'm going to pull that out. I like these guys. Those. Maybe you put those on a paper clip of some sort. And I also have this black, cute little edging, lace kind of edging. Ah, I think I love that brown velvet. It's just saying, me, me, me. Let's see if I have any paper clips or anything. What all goodies do I have in here? I found some of my very favorite ribbon that I've never seen since. When I made my very first album for my dad, I used some of this ribbon. And this is all I have left of it. Ugh, I want more. It is so, so cool. All right. Well, I think I'm going to go with that. And I'll figure out how to hook it up here in a second. Because this one's also cool. Maybe it could just be a little tight bow. Cause this might be kind of cute it's like i have this on there and then have some of this ribbon along that edge and have this little trim that up and have this little bow be like right around in there and then maybe bring in the green in or the purple <coughs> have that dangling from that that might be kind of cute I like the little bow. So I'm going to go ahead and snip off the. This one straight. So that becomes cute little bow action on there. I think it wants to go that way. And I think if I make and take this and have it fold over at the very top. So it's almost like a little tab up there. So it gives you something to pull. And maybe this continues all the way down. All the way down. So I need whatever I'm going to put on that part too. Okay, I'm not watching the chat as you know. Um, gelatos are cool. The beauty is that they are um, a water soluble type of thing. I'm what I'm, <laughs> I gave myself a really big treat oh, with some of my birthday money and I got some oil pastels. Um, and these are French ones. Uh, 
I love my oil pastels. They are a little bit trickier to work with in that they are um, they are oil based rather than water based. But yeah, um, gelatos or water soluble crayons, all of that kind of stuff works great. I love these things. This is what I did. This little guy, I showed this on on um, Instagram. This is all done with um, oil pastels, and they 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 start out they're a little sticky, and they slowly. Um, lose their stickiness. You can also get a spray fix that goes over the top to seal them. Um, but then I, I put the oil pastel and then I smeared them with my fingers and then scratched into them with a stylus. Let's see if I can get it to where you can see there. You can see it scratched in. So, um, but I'm having a love affair with, with um, oil pastels. But gelatos have never been I've I've never been a big fan of the gel gelatos. I like the the um, like Tim's distress crayons are great, um, and then I like these guys too. These are um, these are um, a crayon, but they're water soluble, and you can scribble on them and then put some water over the top, and um, and that's one of the things we might use on this other version. So if we get this one done, and we can work on that, but um, these are. Um, I don't know how to pronounce this, this Karen Darch. Um, these are Neo, uh, Neo Color 2 Aquarelle um, crayons. And these are water soluble, but I love this set because it comes in all sorts of cool colors. Um, and then I have a whole tub of different, where did they get put? Oh, here. And then I have all of these. These are some more closely related to gelatos. Yes, this is where I have all my, this is where I've got my um, distressed crayons in, but I also have a lot of these um, other kinds of art crayons. These are some Michael's ones. Um, these guys are the, um, Marabou, I love the Marabou ones. These Marabou ones are also similar. Um, but I like those also, you know, I've just, I don't know, gelatos and I just never, I never kind of fallen in love with my gelatos. So, um, but there's all sorts of different kinds of water soluble things. So, um, I personally think the distress cans or e uh, crayons are a little easier to use than the gelatos. Um, the gelatos are a lot softer, but that's just, you know, me, um, because it really does become pretty sub subjective at times. Um, just because, you know, it comes down to a lot of, um, that's not the right one that I'm making. Um, personal preference as to what you like to use. And where did my, where did I lose it? My tickets paper. It goes down on top of this one. Because this is part of cut off. Do you guys see and I don't? Not on the floor. It's not on my lap. Hmm. Where are we? I don't see it. Look in the chat. I don't know where this went. Of course, as soon as I pivot and use a different paper, it will fly back in. Maybe you said it. I 
I just use this. No, I use that whip at the front. So that would be okay if I decide to use. We can use this. Yeah, that's weird. I don't know where it went. It just kind of up and disappeared. Sometimes things just say, you know what? I don't want to be in your book. I'm out of here. So fine. I'm not going to force it. If it doesn't want to be there, don't have to. Check bottom of crayon boxes. Oh, that's... Oh, you're right. Hello. Thank you, Jane. Okay. But now I'm almost thinking I like this one better. Do you like the lighter and the yellow? Or the darker? I think I like the lighter. Everything works out the way it's supposed to. See? It always does. Then I like this little piece just to pop on there too. And this. See, it all works out. Like that right up against it. Down the tab. Maybe just do that at the angle like it is. I can cut this off at about right here. Jane was paying attention. Yes, she was. Jane knows how to critically think. Move this down in the U shape. Okay, so I'm just going to fold that up a little bit just to give it a cute little crumple in there. And I'm thinking I want this ribbon to cover over those little dots. So if this kind of comes up and goes right there, that makes sense. Okay, so let's ink this. All. This is just a little piece I had cut off from something else. That's why I save all these little niblets, you know, even though these things are little tiny bits. You never know when you want a little tiny bit. And at the end, you can toss them. I'm, I, I I draw the line at hanging onto those little tiny bits for very long, but just through the end of a project. And then they can go. Then they're allowed to leave. And then I'll just glue this down here at the top and the bottom. I won't glue it down in between. Well, maybe a little bit. And I'll just do a little dabble doodle. I'll glue inside that fold. Inside this one, just, just a squidgel. Not a lot. Of but see it. It's just not one thing, so it pops up still this way. So that. So it's just going to be at this end and this end. Okay. 
This one that snaps is like a little crumpled piece of paper on there. So that's where that's going to fold over and I want to put a little brad in there. <coughs> of course my brads are all, I mean this is frightening how organized I've become and anybody who knows me, ask Pam. I'm not terribly organized but I've even got all my Tim stuff <laughs> put into. So I can use a regular brad. But these little number buns would be cute too. Oh, perfect. What we are going to use is one of these guys because then I can hang my little dingle doodle off of it. But now I don't have to dig through packages <laughs> to find um, this kind of stuff. So I'm going to, so I folded it over. It's about three quarters of an inch or so. It's my piercing tool. There's a little hole through down through everybody. Let's get it through here first. Ah, where is it? Oh, come on. Where is the hole there? Go through there. Both sides. The problem with these is you have to close up the the legs of the brad part of it. There, get it there. I got it through the hole. Now it's got to go through the other end of the hole. And then that's going to go through the hole on here. So I want to turn it so that when I open it up, it's sideways. Oh, wait. If I do that, then this doesn't hang the right way. Okay, it's got to go down a little further. So it's got to go down so that when I open my brad up, it's not sticking above the bag. And I can't turn it because then my loop de loop is hanging the wrong way. So. so this has to open up vertically. So then my little doo -woppy doodle can hang on there. So get it to where these, when you open, when you open a split ring, you always open it this way, not this way. You keep the, the two ends of the split ring along the same plane. You don't open them up away from each other. You open them up along the same plane. Okay, so I'm going to go with the green one. Okay. 
Oh, wait, that... that uh, uh, but I don't want that hanging. Okay, so I'm going to have to get another split ring out. That hangs, so it hangs flat this way because it doesn't have another ring on it. Okay, so let me grab another one out. Like I said, isn't it frightening how organized I am? Okay, so we can close this one back up again and spin it so that the opening is underneath that part. Because then we're going to open it up. So there, it kind of just chained that on a little bit. So then we have that little guy on there. I think I like the bow kind of down there. And then when this folds up. Or maybe it goes, eh, it goes right there, I think. So now I need something down here before I can glue this guy all down. Maybe that's how I can bring this in because that fits on there perfectly. We'll just tear it and I can go that way. That works. Crunkle this end up just a little bit. end up a little bit too. Put it down. Okay, so then I can glue this guy down and he can go all the way. I'll probably cut him off at the edge of the paper bag. But. Well, I hope I'm doing that straight because I'm just eyeballing it. I know, Pam, is it like, just wait, just wait. I'm almost this weekend, I'll probably have my studio finished. And I'm going to do a studio tour um, video. And you will be shocked and amazed. It doesn't even, it doesn't look like my kind of space. <coughs> Here, give it that kind of weathery. I think it's been around for a while. Kind of look. I got to admit, when I go to f look for something, and I kinda, I've kind of got things put into the right places. I might have to dig a little bit within those places, but it's, I got to admit, it's nice. Like when I need a brad, I don't have to go, oh, great, where are those? My next big thing is all my embellishments, is to separate the embellishment packs out from the like the sticker packs and the flower packs and the other kinds of embellishment packs and and they all get their own drawers and such. I got sorry, I gotta hold this while it glues down. But then we can put little goodies can go in here. So that I can have a couple of little things into the pocket. Well, I let this 
glue. Okay, so that's getting stuck. So it's kind of fun having this. So then you can lift this up. Um, that kind of is a visual cue that this lifts up. Then we can put some pattern paper on the back here. Um, and we can do something here if we want. Or leave it if you want to put something there. I might leave it and decide to put something there later. Well, this one has room for the little, little tags to go in here. Yeah, so we don't think that one's perfect. The colors on that, that one's perfect. So these little tags can go in here. So maybe I'll do something off the, this is a good, great spot to where I can scribble stuff. So then this goes down over it, but that's a good scribbly spot. I gotta see. <coughs> oh, I apologize. One of the other things I've been doing is at the one end of my table, I have a tray that I've got all these little, these little cute little teacups that I never use these for tea, little Asian teacups. But this is a great place to put little bits and pieces of leftover things. So those just sit, up. Now there's that one. And then I have, this one's got some little pieces of stuff. So all those little kind of things that you wanna. This has some little beads. These are some little buttons, some cool buttons and stuff. Um, this is stuff we found at the beach. I'm just, while I'm holding this, it's just little inspirational things to keep close by. You know, I've been using use those kinds of things and it just makes my, my death space feel, it just adds some kind of little special elements there. I think that's gonna stick. <laughs> See, I say that and then it doesn't. Come on, I might need to glue this after because it might need to sit overnight because <laughs> with that velvet, when I'm trying to glue organza to velvet, so. It has done a lot to help clear my mind, so. And it's also kind of reintroduced me to a lot of stuff that I have in my studio that I forgot I even had. I'm gonna find a little bit smaller jump ring because that's gonna be a quarter of an inch and that's gonna add a lot of thickness. So I'm gonna find a smaller jump ring for that, for that little dangly thing um, after, after we're done here, so. Pam says she never thought she'd see the day. Yeah. All right. I'm going to give up on this and I'll glue it down after because it just is saying, nope, thanks. Sorry. I don't want to be. So now we can do this guy on the back here. I don't know if any of these guys. I don't want to do another pocket. So these guys aren't quite big enough. So let me. I found this clippings one. It's a little bit different stuff. I love this. There's this one. I love this guy. I think this is so fun. And I think I'm going to do it to where the letters is when it opens up, the letters stand up. They'll be upside down when it goes up here, but this way they're here. Now, do we. It's figuring out which ones I like. I like this E. I like this EDC. So let's do that. Now I don't know where my pencil went. So we're just marking it in a different way. A little fold up. Because my pencil seems to have run away. Where are we at for time? We have 
25 minutes. I always take 10 times longer than I think I'm going to. Well, maybe we can do just a quick, some quick little stuff with some stamps and such on that, the other one. Okay, so, because this one we're almost done with. See, that looks super cute right there like that. And see, then that leaves me this whole one. It's just, it's big enough for something else on one of these other pieces. So, so save that. So then we've got this little guy that's got some cute little stuff on it. So maybe we put that. down in this corner so you can write something on there. Yeah, see the alphas, you know, the plainness of this green isn't as stark with those little guys on there. And maybe this goes up here. So that when those are out, that's kind of looks like that, but it looks like it's all tied into sticking down into that little thing rather than on here. I like this over here. We have this little ticket. It brings that green in. Kind of ties with sun, kind of that bright green over here. But being a little bit more loose and free and not lining everything up and not cutting it perfectly and measuring, you notice I'm not doing that very much right now. Um, so that looks cute that even when that's loose and then I, these guys get put inside there. Maybe that one. I love that one. Let's see if there's another one that's. I think all the rest are going to be too big. This one's just a lot of pain. Let's see what else we got. This is another one that's got some good green on it. It ties in with the green. Those are cute. And then I can ink those. But those are cute in there. And then we got these guys here. Okay, this needs just a little tiny something something. This is where these little... Some of them are a little cute, some of them are fun. These are kind of cool. I like this guy, let's go with him. But I want to put him on a bit of a background so that he stands out a little bit. Isn't he cute? Love the mustache. See, by leaving those little holes, 
on their punch down there, it adds some visual interest. I'm going to take a black marker. Just framing the whole the little box. Maybe I can go around the circles too. And it's not, it doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, the less perfect, I like it better. Being less perfect, but tracing around this. And then that lets that, that like that T and the U poke through, but it, it gives it just a little bit of framing so it stands out maybe just a little bit. And before I glue that down, Use that. See, and I just squiggled up a little bit because of the edge of the paper, but that's fine. So I'm making that mark on my page. Maybe I... But you want them not to be perfect because you want them to look drawn on there by hand. You want your mark of your hand in there. So that means those cute little squiggles along the, the top. So now you're going to not throw away when you punch out a bunch of circles out of your paper. You're going to save those too. <laughs> I'm turning you all into total pack rats. So there's those guys. Okay, oh, there is more of this. Ah, dang it. Okay, that ties in with one of those little circles. And then, as I just noticed, that looks like that. So that ties those together too. Doing that little stitching on the straight part. If you sewed, you could actually stitch that before you glued everything down. But that requires more planning <laughs> than, than I do. So, um, Uh, I didn't do this one a full circle, but that was intentional. See, and this has those little circles right here, too, that I'm just noticing. And this is polka dot, so 
you know, we kind of tripped on to a theme without really necessarily planning it. So I'm just going to tuck that under the little edge there. All right. Whoops. <coughs> so there's that guy and that guy. I think then probably what I'll end up doing is I'm going to do some half, some circles here to make little tabs on this guy, these guys. That was upside down. Um, once I finally decide, I may switch these out to do something out of a different color. Um, but when I put some little tabs, I'll probably bring in another little circle for the tabs. So those tie in with these that are on the paper. And then these that are down here. And then there's one there. So it kind of visually brings your eye around. And then if I have these showing, um, it, it was unintentional. It wasn't until I was doing this and I realized that they've got those kinds of things over here. So subconsciously, I was making note of that. But um, that just makes for a cute little page. Um, we'll put some tags in there. I may also decide that this needs some way of um, having maybe a string from here that comes, and again, another dot. I can have one right here to where it laces around so that this doesn't flop open. But because it falls, it comes from down below. I don't have to, but it might make it a nice, um, because this thing's on there is heavy that when I go this way, as you can see, it, it wants to flop. So I'll probably end up tying that closed, but, um, so fun and easy. And it's all from this, my little piles of scraps other than this page. Um, that was all just my little scrap pieces, um, that we used. So, um, yeah. So we'd already started this one and then I found this pad. So, you know, if you find stuff that works color wise with what you're doing or style wise, um, Oh, see, you know, this page has got the dots on it with the dots, and then it's got this little green on the side. So that might work really well over on this side. So I'll remember that for when I'm working on it. I'll probably do a couple more pages in here um, so that we have. I just had everything out and I got working last week. So after we had dinner. So then, but I'll work on a couple of pages because I really would like to get at least. This to see now that made a really fat thing in there, and that's because when you look down on it, get it the right angle. See how far out that thing st sticks. So I'm gonna get a, something a little bit, even if I tie it on there, and that may be what I do. So it doesn't. Let's just do that because otherwise I'll forget. Um, that's just sticking out too far because that's too big of a jump ring. So I'm gonna tie it. happens to be the Baker's Twain color that I have. Super handy. So that's what we're going to use. Because this paper bag is already adding quite a bit of thickness. So I don't want to add too much thickness. I don't want to make it too big of a bow because I'm going to have that floofy bow down here. So I don't want to have too much. And I'm also going to have something tying this. So I'm just going to make it a tiny little bow. Age up just a little. Oh, that's I'm much happier. Dot of glue so that it doesn't come untied. That makes me much happier. And then it doesn't stick out as far. I can't close my page yet till that dries. So 
So that's got a glue there. So that there, it's not nearly as thick. But I'm not gonna want to, you know, I can there that's probably the thickest page. I don't want to do a bunch of those because then it's gonna make my book super fat. But I can't determine how far apart till I have my signatures done, how far apart I want to bind them. So um, we got to finish our little signature guys before we, we bind them. But yeah, that makes me much, much, much happier. Um, like I said, I'll put some tags down in there. This one's too small. I need the larger size. Yeah. But gives you an idea of what it's going to look like. I'll, I would cut those off. But, <coughs> yep, that came out cute. I like it. So inside, outside. Let me put the glue on here, and then I can set it aside. Let's do its thing. How long do we have? What time is it? Because my kids get all twitchy if I get too far past six. Now, we only got seven minutes. That's not enough time to do a page of this other one. I'll do some pages. And... Um, if, the, if if I can do one, I might do one tomorrow. I'll put it on Instagram live where you can see it. Um, and maybe I'll post it then over on, on, on YouTube as well. But yeah, I'm happy with that. That came out cute. All righty, guys. I'm sorry, Pam, that I don't have enough time to do one of the other pages of the um, the other book, the the ones that I'm going to put this on there. But um, but if I get playing with the crayons and all that kind of stuff, I might I might start doing as I do things like that. If I'm doing something a little bit different, um, if I'm doing it anyway, I might just start taping those, and then I can put the videos up on Instagram and on um, YouTube. But also, I would love to see if you are making any of these um, paperback book journals or signatures. I would love to see what you're doing with them, um, taking it from this to something like this. Um, it's been super fun. You don't have to try and decide and figure out, oh my goodness, what kind of binding am I going to do? Um, what paper should I use? So this is just a fun, easy, make it simple. You can get all detail or you can keep it super simple if you want. So with little... You can do this with paperback books. And I love I love the newsprint texture of the paperback books. It's kind of like old paper um, kind of thing. So you can do it with, um, you know, then any kind of, you can use neutral on the inside or this one where I'm using some brighter colors inside. So paperback book ones, or I'm really dying to get working on this tall skinny one. Um, using the magazine pages. Um, so I think those are going to be fun. This is my ancient magazine from 1996. This magazine was two years older than Trevor. So, <laughs> so anyway, I'm anxious to work on this one. And uh, we'll be back then next week. That's cool, Kristen. Yeah, I'd like to. I'd love to see them. So, you can post some paper doodles. Also, um, it just um, you can also do them on Instagram and um, tag me in it, and you can also hashtag it with um, paperback book journal, all one word, um, and that way we can see them. So it'll be a lot of fun. the beans all righty guys i am hopefully by next week have it figured out to where you can see my smiley face um 
So it's not me going, hi. So, um, but I'll figure out uh, the two cameras and we'll see how it goes from there. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Joy, for bringing that up. Um, please send your thoughts and prayers um, to Lois, who um, always helps us here. She um, had her younger sister pass away today. So that's why she's not here with us this evening. So, um, and if, if you're watching this, Lois, my, my sweetheart, I send you the biggest of hugs. You've not had an easy time those last few years, um, but your biggest of hugs to you and my, my deepest sympathy and condolences um, to Lois um, on the loss of her sister. I don't know any more details than that. Uh, but um, we all love Lois and we're, we are most definitely thinking of her. So send her the brightest blue thoughts because blue is her favorite color. So, and again, thank you as always to Joy for helping out and also to um, Pam for stepping up and helping as well um, with um, Lois out tonight, so. All right, guys, have an amazing weekend and we will be back next Friday. You never know when I might pop in every once in a while. We'll see. We'll see. It if, if this week calms down um, to where I can get some more work done. Um, I may just, this is so easy. This streaming like this is so easy. I may start doing it a little bit more frequently as well. So we'll see. No promises on that. So, um, and they would be kind of unannounced. So anyway, I'm going to let you guys all go. Have an amazing weekend, an amazing um, upcoming week. Stay safe and um, keep trying to play. Take some time. Keep trying to take time for yourself and play a little bit. I'm finding it's really helping my mental state to just carve out that time for me. And um, I hope the same goes for all of you. So I will see you at the very latest next Friday. So bye for now.